this video, we will look at how we can reduce the number of variables that we create in a flow. In flow, we can create a variables to hold data during the context of the flow run. So when you go to the variable action and flow, you, you have these various options available. You have to start with initializing your variable first in order for you to utilize the other actions that are available. So when you select initialize variable, the first thing is you need to give a name to the variable. Variable names have to be unique. So I'm going to call this V name. And if you look at the type, this is where you can define the type of your variable. Now, please note that variables are strongly typed in flow. You have six options available. Boolean, which is true or false can be set as the value for this variable. Integers are purely numbers. Floating point numbers can also be defined by using the float option. String objects, which are basically JSON objects. And, and then you can also go ahead and define arrays or collections. These are the different types of variables that you can create. Once you create a particular variable, you can then go ahead and utilize the other variable actions, which are you can append to an array variable. So if I have an array variable, I can add to it. You can append to a string variable. So if I have a string variable, I can append more text to it. I can decrement the value of a variable that this is specifically for the integer type variables. You can decrement the variable value. You can also increment the variable value. And finally, there is also an option to set a variable that you have defined earlier in your flow. So these are the various options that you can utilize for the variable actions. Now in my scenario, I have gone ahead and created these variables. I have a variable called where name, which is of type string. I've initialized it to Reza. I have the title. I have my company name in here. I have my years of experience in here, which is an integer. And finally, I also have an array that has uh, my expertise in there. So the thing here is that I have one, two, three, four, five variables that I'm using in my flow. Now, please note that this is just an example. I have seen flows that have been built that have plenty of variables in them. And when you initialize these variables, your flows get really long and very difficult to read. Now you need to also be aware that there is an action called as scope, wherein you can group multiple actions together. Initialize variable actions, however, do not go in scopes. So you cannot add these in scopes. And typically these initialize variables are at the beginning of your flow. And if you create too many initialized variables, they're all going to stack up here on the top and that might affect the readability aspect of your flow. So how do you go about reducing these variables? So in this case, I'm going to go ahead and just create a new variable by using the initialize variable action. I am going to call this where profile just calling this my profile, which has all my information in one. And for this, I'm going to go ahead and use the object type. Okay. I'm going to define an object and as part of this object, I'm going to go and define a JSON. So this is what my JSON object looks like. I have an object. It has a property called a V name. These are basically the names of my variables. So I've called it V name and it's of type string. And how do I know that is because I am defining the value for this as a string. V title is again a string V company, the years of experience I'm defining as an integer right here. And V expertise, which is my variable of expertise, which is an array. And that's why I have the square opening and closing back brackets in it. And it's an array of strings. So I have basically gone ahead and defined this one single object that would do the work of all of these five variables. So I have one variable called variable profile, and I'm going to go ahead and rename this to profile. Now, how do I use the values of this variable in actions further on in my flow? The answer to this is through expressions. So let's look at how we can do that. I'm going to go ahead and add a compose action. A compose action basically adds an arbitrary object in your flow. It's like a static value that cannot be changed. In this scenario, I'm using it just to print the value so we can see how we can leverage the values from this profile variable. Typically, when you want the data from a variable, all you have to do is literally just go ahead and select the variable. So I've got a variable profile. I'm just going to select it. It's going to give me that object back. But what I want is the individual values of these variables. Now I can do this through something known as expressions. Now, when I added this variable and again, depending upon the name you've defined for your variable, if I go to the settings right here and if I go to peak code, I can see the name of my variable right here. I can see the code behind this action. So I can just copy this, exclude the at symbol and I'm going to remove this and I'm going to go to expression and I'm going to paste this right here variables of var profile. This will basically give me the value of the variable, which in my case is an object that looks like this. 
Now, if I want the name property, all I have to do right here is put a question mark, then open the square brackets and in single quotes, put the name that I have specified in my object. So V name is what I'm looking out for. I will put the closing square braces and then click on OK. Now this will basically give me the value that is contained in the V name property in this object that is Reza. Similarly, if I want the other pieces of information, all I have to do now is I can go back here, I can copy this and I can go and put the expression right here and change the V name to V title to any other property that I'm looking out for. So I can just go ahead and plug all those properties in here, like years of experience or expertise, which will return me the array object. Now, if I go ahead and if I just run this flow, you will note that the output of the compose action has the values Reza and principal consultant, which is coming from those two expressions that I put in, give me the name and give me the title. Now, in this scenario, I just have one variable that has basically gone ahead and replaced five other variables that I had created earlier, because now I have got these variables that I can utilize throughout my flow. And literally all I have to do is just plug in that one simple expression. Simple to read the values from the object that I have defined right here, but how do I update the values in this variable? So in order to update the values on this variable, what you would have to do is you can go ahead and use that same set variable node. And the way this works is I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to say, I want to set the variable. And in case of set variable, you're going to pick the set variable action. You're going to pick your variable, which in my case is the variable profile. And this is where I need to go ahead and set that variable. Now, first things first, you cannot reference the same variable when you're setting the same variable. So for example, if I pick where profile and if I try and save this flow, you see, it gives me an error right here that says the set variable is not valid. Self referencing is not supported. So in flow, you cannot self reference. So you cannot reference the same variable when you're setting that same variable. That's one of the limitations in flow. What we need to do then in order to set the variable is two things. We need to create one action right before this. Now, rather than creating a variable, you can just go and use the compose action. So I'm going to leverage the same compose action right here. I'm going to clean all of this up. And in this compose action, what I will go ahead and do now is for this compose action, I will go into expression and in expression, there's something known as set property. So I'm trying to set a property. Now a property for which object? IntelliSense is asking me for the object. The object is if I go to dynamic content and if I pick variable profile, that's my object, right? That's my variable. And this was the same P code formula that we copied earlier. What's the property that you want to set? So in my case, let's say the V years of experience. Let's say I want to change this. Okay. So just put the V years of experience. That's the name of my property. I'm going to put it in single quotes. Next, it is going to ask you for the value that you want to set it to. And in my case, I want to set it to a different value. Now in my case, it was 12 earlier. I'm going to change this to 13 and I'm going to close my bracket. I'm going to click OK. So this will now set that property in that object, which is V years of experience to 13. And then in the set variable action, because I can't self reference, no problem. I can reference the output of the compose action. So I'm just going to pick the output of the compose action and let's go ahead and run this flow. It's going to go ahead and execute that compose action. And notice once the compose action runs, this is the output object that gets returned right here. You see the number is now gone up to 13. And when I go to set variable, that variable is now set again, but this time the value for V years of experience has changed to 30. So you can update properties as well. Now there are many other use cases as well that we need to be aware of. One use case that we typically use is increment or decrement a value. So let's say my years of experience was 12. I want to increment it by one, right? I want to increment the existing value by one right now in the set property, I have hard coded it to 13, but I don't want to do that. So now what we need to do is we can use the same expression logic that I showed earlier. So instead of using the number 13, which is hard coding, what we can do is we can do this. We can say, go to the variable, right? Get the, the years of experience from there. So it's going to get that value, which is the years of experience in that variable right here. And I want to add one to it. Remember incrementing is basically like adding. Okay. Now in flow, there's an expression called add. So all I'm going to do is I'm going to decorate this with an add. My first value is 
the years of experience that's contained in the variable comma the second value is going to be one because i want to increment it by one and i'm going to click on update so now this is what my peak code looks like i am setting the property of the variable which is my object which is variable profile and in there i am setting the property v years of experience and while setting that property i'm getting the value from I'm getting the value of v years of experience again from the existing variable and adding one to it. So basically I am updating it by one. I'm incrementing it by one. Let's go ahead and run the slope. If you look at the compose output, once again, the years of experience is gone to 30. So if you look at the variable actions, uh, appending to a string variable is very, very simple. We can just use the concat expression to append to a string variable. Decrement variable is basically the same logic that I showed earlier, but instead of add, we can use the subtract expression. It's called sub SUV that you can leverage. Increment variable is what I showcased. Initialize variable, we're already initializing. Setting a variable is we can use that set property technique that I showcased. Now the only one remaining is appending to an array variable. So how do we append to an array variable? Now in my case, I have this array here called V expertise that has three values in it. Now let's say I want to add Power BI to my expertise. How do I do that? If I want to append to an array, I'm going to again go back to that same compose action. So I'm setting the property in that variable that I have and the property that I'm looking out for is V expertise. So what's the property that I'm trying to update? That's V expertise. And now I need to go ahead and append a value to an array. I will go ahead and now use something known as union. Union is an expression that basically goes ahead and combines two objects and gives you all the elements of both the objects together. Now, the first object in my union property is nothing but V expertise coming in from that initial variable. So I can just copy the same code right here and just go ahead and place it here. And then I need to read the existing value from V expertise, which is right here. So this is one array comma. Now I want to mix it with what I want to mix it with another array. So let's go ahead and create an array. And this time I'm going to add that extra value that I want to append to the existing array. And let's say in this case, I want to append power BI. So in single quotes, I have power BI. Now, once I'm done with this, I'm going to close my bracket at the end and click on update. Let's look at peak code for this. So what I'm doing right here is I'm trying to set the property V expertise. The expression that we are using here is union. So we are doing a union with the existing value of V expertise, which is all the data that I have in my V expertise array, which is right here. And then to this, I am appending an additional node that also is an array in my case. And that value is power BI. Now let's go ahead and run this. So there we go. This has run. Let's look at the output of compose. And right here, as you can see, I have gone ahead and added Power BI to my array value. So it acts like I am appending something to this array. So all the existing actions that are available in variables, you can recreate them. Yes, there's a little bit more complexity here purely because you need to learn expressions in this scenario. But if you get the hang of expressions in flow, you can reduce the amount of variables that you're using in flow considerably. It's just a more cleaner experience for having just one variable that you're maintaining throughout your flow. And you can always use the compose action to print and check the values of your object throughout the flow run. Thank you so much for watching. I hope this was useful. Do like, comment and subscribe to my YouTube channel.